Season 13 released today for Sea of Thieves and it's easily the most hyped update for years. It adds two new activities, some new tools, a new season pass and a shipload of cosmetics. But has it reached our incredibly high expectations? Let's find out. Season 13 is Flameheart themed. It's all about his eventual return to the Sea of Thieves with events kicked into gear in November 2019 and he was finally confirmed to return in November 2022. 18 months of waiting and he's here and with him he brought a new world event, several smaller raids and one and a half new tools. Right let's get the bad out of the way first. Flameheart has arrived with basically no explanation of what he's been doing for the last 18 months. He just arrives and is sat at the reaper's hideout. The throne and the light remodeling is amazing but the introduction is pretty meh. Mike Chapman has said this is just the start so I'm extremely excited for the second Flameheart update. With that being said, they made Flameheart accurate to his lore size, he's not as big as the other skeleton lords but he's still taller than the servant of the flame. I'm so happy to see him in game, it's honestly brilliant. Now that's out of the way, Rare has really delivered, even exceeded on the gameplay. A tall tale or adventure doesn't do him justice, a new world event does however. The Burning Blade has been remade somehow, so it now has a chance of appearing as a world event for crews to take on. This larger ship will patrol the new skeleton camps and become hostile when you get close. The Burning Blade will fire regular cannonballs, bone callers and firebombs at you. However, it also has the ash and raw at the front of the ship. This shoots an area of effect projectile that will set fire to the ship and deal massive damage on full impact. The Burning Blade actually scales with crew sizes, being less aggressive on smaller ships and allowing for solos to be able to repair. As a solo sleeper, it was a decent challenge, but I never felt like I was in any danger when fighting it. Newer and less skilled players will find this more difficult than a skeleton galleon, but not by much. You then have the option to take over the Burning Blade if you sink it, or you can allow it to sink to obtain loot and the new Burning Blade sword. More on that shortly. Crews who pledge the allegiance to Flameheart will crew the Burning Blade and the skeletons will become your allies. This also scales with crew sizes, where smaller crews receive more skeletons and more skeleton respawns. These are finite for any crew size. You can replenish the respawns by doing the rituals at the skeleton camps with the Burning Blade. That's the main objective. Other than fighting other players, you have to travel to the six new skeleton camps and complete them to earn tribute. Tribute is gold and reputation value that can be stacked infinitely. This is paid out when you end the world event at the Reaper's Hideout or lost when you're sunk. The Burning Blade will be bound to cause whole servers to come to it, even more so as if you sink it, the Chest of Fortune is awarded. All other world events are probably going to be obsolete again. The Burning Blade looks stunning too. The art team have knocked out of the park, with the sound department really owning in both sound effects and the soundtrack. There's no complaints here, it's perfect. The ship is also really really nice to control as a galleon crew, where the event is best enjoyed. A good galleon crew will clear out a server, which is not necessarily a good thing, but this should actually incentivize alliances now. This brings me onto some concerns, and I would be remiss if I didn't raise these. As once a burning blade is claimed, those who want to sail it will just leave to a new server, as they cannot claim it if you sink a player controlled one. This is an oversight, since it will make burning blade and non burning blade servers. I will mention, Athena's fortune are heavily incentivized for sinking it, as sinking the ship will earn grade 5 emissary and the ability to get the burning blade sword. This retains 50% of the value of the ship and can be sold to any trading company, but more importantly, you can sell it to Athena's Fortune if you're a pirate legend. If you retrieve it as the crew of the Burning Blade, you can only sell it to the Reaper's Bones. The sword itself does massive damage to enemies and sets players on fire, also causing knockback. You can sprint with it, you can block with it, you can sword lunge with it. Think of it as a sword, just red, hot and glowing. If you're crewing the Burning Blade, you'll get access to the Obsidian Ash and Wind Skulls. These will allow you to set fire to your enemies with some knockback as well. Don't forget the Burning Blade is immune to fire as are your skeletal crewmates so go ham with this one. Stepping back to the minor issues with the ship, solos do get more skeletons to help you but if your crew is wiped out and you run out of respawns, it's essentially game over for you. I think solos should probably have infinite respawns, we want this content to be enjoyed by everyone. The other oversight on this event is that if the Burning Blade is active, there's no other world events even if a crew does take it over this remains the same. The crew of the blade cannot do tool tales or activate voyages which is a shame, but other world events should have been made accessible when a crew is on the burning blade. I get they wanted everyone on the server to focus on the burning blade as a world event, but imagine fighting it while they take on a skeleton fleet or the chaos of a fort of fortune while the burning blade also partakes. I would love to see this get patched in the future, but it's probably something to do with the poor server performance. So yeah, you're funneled into the rituals at the skeleton camps. The skeleton camps are the second part of the content. 
If you're on the Blade Crew, you'll have to complete the puzzles and gain access to the chamber to activate the orb inside, but this lets you gain tribute for the Burning Blade. There's no other loot here, you can pick up some gold piles with a small chance of an instant 10k gold though. The gameplay path is different if you're not on the Blade, you get to fight waves of obsidian skeletons on top of the puzzle. You get an orb that can be sold to any trading company aside from Athena's Fortune, and they sell for 20,000 gold. Rare made the smart decision to only have one piece of loot so solos can easily get the loot back to their ship. Raids play in the same way, but you get company specific loot in a single collector's chest and can be done with any of the three OG trading companies. If you do it with Athena's Fortune, you're rewarded with two chests at the end. This content is so, so, so good, and it's worthy of a season. It feels like a mirror of the amazing season 6 with two big pieces of content, just focused on the Reaper's bones instead of Athena's fortune. The visual design of the skeleton camps is sensational, with each camp feeling unique and it builds on that principle introduced with the sea forts. You can also do voyages at these camps still. Robin, Chloe and co smash it to pieces with a spectacular score that incorporates the old Flameheart light motifs and the new Warrior of the Waves from season 12. The main menu just goes so hard and draws on old classics like Heart of Fire and Ashen Winds. It's truly wonderful to see some of these almost predictions come true four years later. Season 13 answers a lot of our concerns when it comes to animal cosmetics, and they're all actually awesome. The Emporium is stuffed again, but the balance has been met with the season's initial offerings. Starting off with the worst stuff, we have some new sets in the stores. The Kraken sets, as predicted, receive their heavy and light swords along with the Kingly Jacket variant. We also got two new tattoos, the Whalebone Tattoo and the Tentacle Terror Tattoo. Both are really cool. There's a new 9-piece clothing vanity set called the Vibrant Plume Clothing. It's very nice if you're into parrots. The Carpenter Weapon set is also here and is a lovely addition. There's no throwing knives or double barrel for this set though. The Season 6 Season Pass items are also here, so if you missed out on that, go grab these with such highlights as Bell's Hat and the Mysterious Stranger Cutlass, along with the Naval Commander set. A fantastic recolor is awarded for part of the commendations for the new content. The Obsidian Bone Crusher set is an ashen variant of the OG as a new black and red and glowing set. This includes weapons, clothing and a ship set. The ship set is superb and they've gone really hard with the Reaper theme here. It's great for mix and matching. There's even a new double barrel pistol and throwing knife. This set is stupendous and I would love to see more recolors of this quality. As for the new miscellaneous items, there's a few new trinkets tied with the commendations, the Cracked Orb Lantern, the Ancient Skies Tattoo and Bat Beyond Tattoo. There's also a Half Face Reaper Mask for human pirates to wear. And this rounds off the list of annual new cosmetics. Time to move on to the Pirate Emporium. Psych, there's a bunch more to go. The Burning Blade Reborn set is here. While it's not the original set myself and others have been clamouring for, Rare did an awesome job for this one. It's all suitably dragon themed and melds so well with the original ship. There's more, with our biggest dump of skeleton cosmetics since season 8 came out. There's two new bone colours, the obsidian bones or the seared obsidian bones. These two will be so popular. There's four new heads including the branded skull, the mohawk skull, shattered mask skull and the amazing obsidian captain skull. There's the obsidian leather upper body, gold trim upper body and captain's upper body, with the same pieces for the legs. These are mind blowing and I love that the skeleton curse is getting more support. Keep in mind though, if you want to earn these you have to grind the hourglass. And on the topic of that poorly supported content, the Guardians of Fortune and the Servants of the Flame get their respective throwing knives if you achieve level 50 in their respective factions. I've just found my new throwing knife. Lorena's throwing knife is also available as part of the season 12 commendations. Moving on to the season pass with the best we've had since season 8, maybe the best ever. The new Blooded Dragon set is stunning, with it matching the new Asian themed Burning Blade. It's crimson, gold and green and goes so well together. The seasonal sales, flag, scar, face paint and tattoo are the best ever. These are called the Flameheart Revenge set, all of it is so stunning. There are also some nice one-off items like Shelly the Crab Figurehead and the Isle Hopper Tankard. Unfortunately, the Pirate Legend rewards aren't from the big man set himself. You think Flameheart season, Flameheart items, well no. The Bonesmith's Belt and Hook are the rewards. While I'm giving major points for the obscure items that are Reaper themed, Flame March Jacket and the Burning Blade Figurehead would have been the cherry on top. It's so weird how they wouldn't choose two of the most obvious items. Ideally, this selection was just missing Flame March Clothing and the OG Burning Blade set, but I'm in no way disappointed with the quality and the quantity. It just felt like the perfect time to release it. Although these might be better suited as Hourglass rewards in the future, since Athena's Fortune has the Magpie's Wing stuff. The paid rewards in the Plunder Pass are really smart. The Eclipse set includes a new jacket, gloves and gimp mask. 
with the ship set and respective collector's variants. It's interesting there's no new curse, although the plunder pass is always good value. Moving on to the Emporium, we got Toucans. It's better than fucking Owls, and I'll pick one of these up. There's the Radiant Comet ship set, which looks like the Lodestar set. There's a Weapon Bundle too. There's no Throwing Knives or Double Barrel at the moment, so expect them next month. The Borderlands-themed Mayhem set is back. Expect more crossover sets in the future. There seems to be a pattern here. Four new emotes have also been released in the Emporium. There's a free Sting Tide Cutler, so make sure you pick that up. It's a pretty bog standard Emporium update, at least they got the balance right with the earnable cosmetics. Overall, super strong showing for cosmetics, and the earnable stuff is bliss, despite my petty gripes with the flame art stuff. It's the best season since 8 in terms of rewards, and Rares nailed the balance between the earnable and paid stuff. If we had this level each season and every month, I'll be one happy boy. Aside from small design tweaks and some missing cosmetics, season 13 is an absolute triumph. While the content might be geared towards larger crews, the update does Flame Art's long-awaited return justice, and I'm so glad this is just the beginning. Tier Thieves has needed a beastly update for a very long time. While Season 11 and Season 12 were nice little appetizers, this is a massive fuck-off three-course meal. The visual design, the music, the cosmetics, and content all exceed expectations here, and I'm beside myself finally getting to see Flame Art in the game. You know what? Take it with a pinch of salt because I'm biased and I love Flame Heart, and I'm sure the comments will remind me, but fuck it. Season 13 is the best season for Sea of Thieves yet. Yeah.